For decades, man has been building increasingly sophisticated underwater vehicles that can remain submerged for much longer lengths of time and travel at greater speeds and depths. However, maintaining contact with a submerged submarine has been, at best, extremely difficult. Now, submarines can be given specific tactical instructions from the air through the use of an expendable device. The device, which does not depend upon explosive charges, is the sound underwater signal, Mark 84, Mod O. Launched from an aircraft, the Mark 84 can be preset to transmit any one of four independent codes. Each code represents a pre-assigned command message. Let us take a look at a complete Mark 84. It consists of three major subsections, the tail section, midsection, and nose. The tail section stabilizes the unit during its descent, both in air and water. It also houses the saltwater battery, which provides power for the electronic package. Note that the flooding and exit ports have been provided in the tail section. When the unit enters the water, these provide a swift and continuous flow of water through the battery. It is important to remember that the battery needs salt water to activate. Just forward of the flooding ports, you see a rubber boot. In this section, the ceramic transducer and electronics package are to be found. The nose houses the manually operated code selector switch. The main components of the Mark 84 are the battery, electronic package, the transducer, the tail section, the electronics housing cylinder, and the nose. Now that we have some idea of what a Mark 84 looks like and have examined its main components, let us take a brief look at a functional description of just what a Mark 84 does after it enters the water. Water flows through the tail section via the flooding and exit ports and activates the salt water battery. The battery voltage in turn activates the electronics package, which produces the pre-selected coded electrical signal. This signal is amplified and applied to the ceramic transducer, which converts the coded electric signal to a coded acoustic sound pressure signal. This acoustic signal propagates omnidirectionally through the water and is received by the submarine sonar or underwater telephone. If the Mark 84 is to carry out its mission, it must be built to exacting standards. And both the individual components and the complete unit must be thoroughly tested. The Mark 84 is carefully designed and precision manufactured by each manufacturer to ensure reliable transmission of its coded message. Since reliability is such an important factor, component parts are carefully pre-tested during the manufacturing process. Complete units from each production lot are subjected to extensive quality control checks. Included in these are such environmental tests as vibration, shock, and pressure. 100% of the completed units are tested to be sure that all four codes work and that they are in the correct order. Some units are also airdropped, exactly simulating actual use conditions. After a production lot has been accepted, the Mark 84s are enclosed in separate plastic bags and packed into ammunition cases for shipment. Note the plastic separators which are used to space the units in the ammunition cases. Note also the humidity indicator. Several steps must be taken prior to launching the Mark 84 to ensure its proper operation. In each ammunition container, there are eight Mark 84s, each of which is sealed in its own plastic bag carefully read the instruction sheet before opening the plastic bag. Also, before opening the plastic bag, check the humidity indicator. 
If the indicator color is in the moisture range, do not use the unit. If the moisture indicator is in the safe region, and you are sure you are going to use the unit, open the bag and turn the code selector in the nose until the index mark is aligned with the selected code setting as ordered by the plane commander. A meaning has been assigned to each of the four codes. With a screwdriver, coin, or similar device, it is a simple matter to set the selector to the desired position. If it is necessary to set the code selector switch in the dark, turn the switch as far counterclockwise as it will go without unduly forcing the mechanism. The code selector is now in position one, and if the signal were to be used, it would generate code number one. Now as the switch is turned clockwise, the second, third, and fourth positions would generate codes two, three, and four respectively, were the units to be used. Since the battery has not yet been activated, you will be unable to hear any sound. Listen to the sound generated by the Mark 84 when the selector is positioned at each one of the four settings. In the following demonstration, F1 indicates the lower tone, which is near 3 kilohertz, and F2 indicates the higher tone, which is about 3.4 kilohertz. Setting the selector to position 1 produces a signal in which F1 and F2 are each broadcast for 1 and 5 tenths seconds. Listen carefully to code 1. In position 2, F1 is broadcast for 5 tenths of a second, while F2 is audible for 1 and 5 tenths seconds. While listening to this code, note the shorter duration of F1. Position 3 yields a signal in which F1 and F2 are each transmitted for 5 tenths of a second. Listen to code 3. Finally, position 4 produces a code in which F1 is heard for 1 and 5 tenths seconds, and F2 is heard for 5 tenths of a second. Here is code 4. To ensure that the Mark 84 will deliver the above codes accurately and reliably, there are a few simple precautions that should be taken. Although a rugged piece of equipment did not be dropped or banged, crushed or jammed, precautions should also be taken that Mark 84s are not dropped on surface submarines. Also remembering that the battery is salt water activated, it should be obvious that exposure to moisture will reduce the life of a Mark 84 and seriously impair its reliability. Do not use one of these signals if it has been out of its sealed bag for more than 60 days. It is important that the Mark 84 not be disassembled. A high internal voltage is generated when the device is activated, and a shock hazard exists only if the signal is disassembled. Most Mark 84s will be launched from aircraft, such as the S2A, S2E, or the P3A or P3B. Usually, the Mark 84 will be launched automatically from aircraft, sound signal dispensers, or out of freefall tubes. Since one signal bears a complete coded message, only one Mark 84 should be launched at any one time. We have now discussed what the Mark 84 is, how it is operated and launched, and some of the precautions that must be taken in its use. This diagram will help to make clear the history of a Mark 84 from the time it is launched until its coded signal is received by a submarine. When launched, the Mark 84 follows a bomb-like trajectory to the water surface. The signal may, of course, be launched from any altitude. It is interesting to note, however, that because it has been designed to withstand extremely high impact shocks, it may be launched from extremely low altitudes at high speed. When the signal enters the water, it sinks at the rate of approximately 18 feet per second. The seawater flowing through the tail section activates the battery within three seconds of water entry. And the coded acoustic signal is immediately propagated in all directions. This acoustic signal is transmitted for at least 45 seconds, but no more than 120 seconds. Therefore, it is important to wait at least two minutes after water entry of one unit before launching another. Two signals transmitting at the same time would be completely unintelligible to anyone who would be listening for a message. As you have just heard, the Mark 84 broadcasts two discrete frequencies in the audible range. 
The lower frequency is fixed above 2.95 kilohertz, while the upper is fixed below 3.55 kilohertz. There will always be at least 2 to 3 percent difference between the two. The sound of the Mark 84 can be received by several standard submarine systems, such as the ANBQR-2, ANBQR-7, and the underwater telephone, ANUQC. The UQC receives only the third harmonic radiation from the Mark 84 in the vicinity of 10 kilohertz. It is important to review some of the points previously discussed. Remember that the battery is salt water activated. Therefore, do not remove the plastic bag until immediately before use. If a bag is removed and a Mark 84 is not immediately launched, that unit must be used within 60 days. After unpacking, check the humidity indicator, read the instruction sheet, and set the code selector to the desired signal. Of course, you will not hear any sound because the battery has not been activated. Launch the Mark 84s one at a time with at least a two-minute interval between the water entry of one unit and the launch of another. Remember that the Mark 84 must not be disassembled, treated harshly, or dropped on a surface submarine. The Mark 84 ensures immediately reliable communication between aircraft or surface vessels and a submerged submarine without disrupting the tactical mission of the submarine. Other uses of the Mark 84 beyond the scope of this film are loading a preset signal at a weapon station, utilizing special adapters, and launching from various surface vessels.